now available in paperback and e-readers, Spellbound, a darker shade of black. Get your copy today at your favorite online bookseller. A lot of you comic fans and a lot of you moviegoers don't really understand why Spider-Man Homecoming was racist. And I'm going to try to explain everything to you so you can understand why this movie is a slap in the face to black men and a slap in the face to you moviegoers as well because when it came down to this film it did not give you the high quality experience that previous Marvel Studios films like Iron Man and Captain America the First Avenger did. What happened with this film is Marvel Studios and Sony lowered the bar for standards as related to their films. Now what makes this Spider-Man Homecoming movie racist is the fact that we had Peter Parker in Miles Morales' story. And a lot of people don't understand that Miles Morales was a black character who was given the mantle of Spider-Man when the Ultimate Spider-Man line was having trouble with sales. So we had them create this Miles Morales character and they decided to have him be this black Spider-Man in the name of diversity. And with this adaptation, the Marvel Studios and Sony decided to come in sideways at viewers and decide, instead of adapting Peter Parker's stories from the old 1960s comics, they were going to try to slip in Miles Morales' story. How is that racist? It's racist because you're saying that this black character can't carry a film on his own and that this black character can't stand on his own merits. It's Marvel Studios and Sony basically saying, we have no faith in this black character, so we're going to transpose this white character onto this black character's story. That's a slap in the face to both Peter Parker Spider-Man fans and Miles Morales fans. It's an insult to black people because basically you're saying that this character has no value unless it is validated by a white person and a white person has to take that story and carry that story because this black character can't carry himself on his own. And Sony and Marvel Studios both knew Miles Morales wouldn't be accepted by the Marvel f film fans. Most of the Marvel film fans, if they had saw Miles Morales popping up in that Captain America Civil War, there would be so much rage and outrage that that movie would have died at the box office. So they tried to come in sideways by slipping Peter Parker in with Miles Morales' story. And again, that's racist because you're saying you don't have the courage to stand behind Miles Morales' story and you're going to take Peter Parker and put him in Miles Morales' story. Now the other thing that makes Spider-Man Homecoming racist is the passive-aggressive attempt at diversity because when you look at this attempt at diversity it really is a form of white supremacy because basically in this film you have Tony Stark who was the alpha male and then you have Peter Parker who's the beta white male and that's a social hierarchy most people don't know about. The alpha male is the leader so they have Tony Stark who was the leader and then you have Peter Parker who's presented as a beta role and all the minorities are presented under him and the way they are presented is to be in a way submissive to your Peter Parker. We look at your Flash Thompson who is supposed to be Peter Parker's bully, and he really does not interact with him in the same way that white Flash Thompson does. No, Indian Flash Thompson, he will throw out insults and digs, but he will not get directly in the face of your Peter Parker, because when it comes down to white supremacy, people of color do not directly engage white people because they are supposed to be submissive to them. So he takes his insults and his digs at him from a distance. He does not go face to face like White Flash Thompson because when it comes down to White Flash Thompson, White Flash Thompson in the comics is an alpha male. He's a jock. He's an athlete. He's muscular. He's strong. He's po more powerful physically than Peter Parker, but he's not as powerful as Spider-Man. But that dynamic was taken out in the name of diversity and because they wanted to give you an Indian Flash Thompson they decided to bring in a different social dynamic and that social dynamic is racist because you are presenting this Indian guy and he's not going to be as confrontational as the white character that's not diversity that's white supremacy straight in your face and when it comes down to characters like Liz and MJ the way they were presented was racist as well because here you have Peter Parker 
who was pining after Liz, who was biracial, and again, he's in the distance with this female. He's not going face-to-face -face with her. He's not doing anything directly. And even when he's stating his feelings for this female, he never goes straight face-to-face. -face. His body language is stiff. His body language is distant. He has no real emotional relationship with this female. And the same thing with the Zendaya character. She's all in the distance. She's not going close with him. If you compare this film to 2002 Spider-Man, you will see a completely different social dynamic as related to this film and the way the females have relationships with each other. Moreover, you will see the best friend with Harry Osborn and then this um, overweight um, Pacific Islander. Again, another racist dynamic. Here you have Peter Parker's best friend, and they don't give him a best friend like Harry Osborn was, because when, when you look at Harry Osborn and Peter Parker, they were pretty much equal in terms of each other. They were both nerds, but they were both equal in terms of each other. Harry Osborn was just as just as um the same size, the same build, and they had they were both similar to each other. This kid who is Pacific Islander, they make him overweight and they make him fat so that they can present him as making him look like less than to your Peter Parker. But this goes over the heads of many comic fans and moviegoers because when it comes down to many comic fans and many moviegoers, they're not thinking about the social dynamics as it relates to these type of films. They're so caught up in the whole idea of Marvel Studios producing a Spider-Man movie, they can't see the racism being presented to them in this film and its imagery. When you look at the imagery of this film, you will really get offended by it because this imagery is racist in and of itself. The dynamics of the story are racist in and of themselves. And the agendas being pushed by this film are racist in and of themselves because they set a double standard when it comes down to interracial relationships. And when it comes down to interracial relationships in this film, they were heavily pushed in this film with Peter pining for biracial Liz and MJ pining for Peter Parker. And then you had the vulture's wife, who was a black woman. However, when we look at the double standard on this film, you don't see any black men looking at any white women. And that's a double standard that has been going on through the dynamics of many of these comic book film adaptations and these television adaptations. Because I can look at your CW's Flash, where we have Black Iris West pining after Barry Allen, Legends of Tomorrow, where we had Vixen going out here and pining after Steel and having a relationship with Steel. And I'm seeing a double standard. And the same thing, that double standard is clear to me because when I look at Supergirl and Black James Olsen, everybody had fan outrage about Black James Olsen pining after white Supergirl and Supergirl thinking about making Black James Olsen their love interest. And I believe if you were to take someone like Falcon or War Machine and decide that for he was going to be the love interest of one of these white females like a Scarlet Witch or a Black Widow, we would say the same fan outrage. Moreover, we actually have seen that same fan outrage because that's why Jessica Jones's ratings were so low because when it came down to it, most people did not want to see white female Jessica Jones going out here and having a relationship with Luke Cage. But it's okay for Peter Parker and Barry Allen and Steele to go out here and have relationships with black women and that's okay. That That's okay with them, but when black men have relationships with white women, that's not okay with most of these comic fans out here. Clearly a racist double standard when it comes down to these interracial relationships. And this is something most of these comic fans don't want to acknowledge about this racism that goes on in this comic book industry. And it was blatantly in our face with this Spider-Man Homecoming. I was deeply offended by what was presented in Spider-Man Homecoming because I came into this movie anticipating and expecting to see a movie about Peter Parker. I was coming in expecting to see the elements of Peter Parker's story presented on screen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I came in expecting to see things like J. Jonah Jameson, The Daily Bugle, and Spider-Man interacting and engaging with his villains in the way that he did at the comics. I felt like I was ripped off by this film because this film made it look like it was going to give me one thing and then tried to push a social justice agenda in the frame of its story. And that is another thing that 
deeply offended me. In fact, it's deeply offended me to the point where I'm about to walk away from these Marvel Studios films and I'm pretty much done with them because if you're going to come in here and try to push a social justice agenda in your stories, that's not what I come to Marvel Studios films for. I come to Marvel Studios films for action and adventure that is just like the old school Marvel comics. And if you want to give me that type of action and adventure, yeah, I'm game for that. But you're not going to come in here and then try to shoehorn some social justice agenda in sideways and try to push some diversity campaign on me and then tell me it's a superhero movie. That's peeing on my leg and telling me it's rain and I don't take that from anyone in this comic book industry. When DC Comics came out here with the new 52 in 2011, that was it for me with DC Comics. I didn't buy another DC comic in the last seven years. I have not bought another DC product in the last seven years. And the reason why I have not bought their products is because they want to continue pushing that new 52 and I'd only buy classic DC. When you come back to classic DC, I'll buy your products. And the same thing with these Marvel Studios films and these Marvel products. I have no problem walking away from both of these companies because both of these companies clearly show me that they do not respect me as a customer and they do not respect their customers or appreciate their customers. They have lowered the bar with this Spider-Man Homecoming and they did it in such a sideways and subtle way that most people can't pay attention to see how this company went out of its way to slap the customers in their face and especially their black male customers in their face. I, as a black man and a black creator, I did not see a positive example of diversity in Spider-Man Homecoming. I saw forced diversity, I saw social justice warrior diversity, and when it comes down to social justice warrior diversity, it's just white supremacy and racism as I see it, because it's okay for the white character to be themselves, but the characters of color have to be stereotypes. Moreover, the black female characters have to go out of their way to deify and worship the white male characters, no different than Olivia Pope did on the TV show Scandal. So when I look at this program, movie, I become deeply offended because this was just like trying to make me watch an episode of Scandal and repackaging an episode of Scandal. And that deeply offended me when I watched this movie. And it deeply made me so angry to the point where, again, I'm walking away from these Marvel Studios films and I want nothing to do with them anymore. Because if you're going to come out here and try to push a social justice agenda, we have nothing to talk about. Same thing that I had with DC Comics, the same way I feel about DC Comics and their new 52, is the same way I'm starting to feel about this Marvel right now. And I have no problem walking away from either company because I have no problem walking away from people who disrespect me. When you disrespect me, I have a standard for how I will be treated and how I will be, um, how I will be received how, and how I will be seen. If, I, if you don't meet my standard, I have no problem walking away from you and, and writing you off because I've written people off in the past and I've written companies off in the past and I have no problem not but watching, your, watching these movies or buying any of their products because if you're not going to show me respect, then I have no problem not supporting your products.